and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us. We have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design. And the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, as you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning comb. In your mercy, cleanse me, that I worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel, according to to St. Matthew, glory be to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with them. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I can make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate, and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell anyone the vision until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen. In today's Holy Gospel, on this second Sunday of our Lenten season, we hear the event we've now come to call the Transfiguration. Last week we know that Jesus was in the desert, and now in another connection place with Almighty God, Jesus goes to the high mountain. Immediately, those who heard this, the Jews, would have put together a, another high mountain in Scripture, that being where Moses had receive the law from Almighty God. In fact, so many points of this scripture reading fall in line. 
Jesus goes up on the high mountain, as Moses did. There is the contact with God in a bright cloud that comes, a voice comes from the cloud. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Likewise, we know that when Moses went up the mountain, he took three other individuals with him. They waited a little lower as he ascended to the highest most point, but here too Jesus takes three Peter, James, and John, those who may be considered his inner circle, for lack of a better term. But we're reminded here when we look back at that, that this account is first and foremost the disciples' encounter with the awesome power of God. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became white as light. An encounter with the Almighty. It reminds us, my brothers and sisters, that in our Lenten Jersey, we too are having an encounter with the Almighty. But even more so in this case of the Transfiguration, when Moses came down from the mountain, he was carrying the tablets of the law. Likewise, his face shone like the sun, and people were afraid because of that encounter, but he held the tablets of the law. Jesus comes down, and Scripture says it quite plainly. He was there alone. They saw no one but Jesus alone. My brothers and sisters, there is still the law involved here, but the law is now in the very person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the Word of God. He is the law of the Lord, the fulfillment of the law. He had said in other places in Scripture, I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it in his very person. And so the fact that Jesus was there alone. We also see, too, the importance of those who were with him, Moses and Elijah. We had seen already that our Lord is presented in the Gospel, in the entire Gospel of Matthew, as one fulfilling the role in many ways as Moses did. But we also remember the encounter Moses encountered God on a holy mountain, and Elijah did as well. When God was speaking to Moses, he spoke in the thunder. The voice of God thundered, and the law was given. For Elijah, it was different. When Elijah climbed up that same mountain, we know that the hurricane came, the earthquake came, and God was not in the hurricane, God was not in the earthquake. And then a small, still voice. Elijah shielded his eyes, and God passed by. God comes in the thunder, and in a small, still voice. And knowing my brothers and sisters, we must take both of those lessons to heart in this Lenten season. God cries out to us in our larger acts of devotion. The prayer life that we, devotional life that we celebrate together. In our Lenten disciplines of prayer and fasting and giving those larger ways in which we desire to grow ever closer to him. But he also speaks to us in that small, still voice in these moments of the Lenten season. As we kneel in prayer, Jesus said it in the Gospel of Ash Wednesday. When you pray, go to your room, close your door and pray to your Father in private, in secret. 
So in those small, still moments, when we lift our hearts, our minds, our prayer to Almighty God, when we give a bit of charity that no one else sees, encouragement that is for no one but the recipient, in large ways and in small ways, in this Lenten season, God is calling to us, speaking to us, to follow Him. Jesus charged them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. We know that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, so this vision now is ours. This vision, Jesus Christ, is made manifest to us. St. Paul said it in that letter to young Timothy. He saved us and called us, as we do in this Lenten season, called us to a holy life. Not according to our works, not according to our strength, but according to his own design. Christ Jesus now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Jesus Christ. This appearance then in the Transfiguration and his appearance to us in Eucharist, in Word, in the worshiping community gathered together. Jesus Christ brought to light through the Gospel, the entire Gospel as it is presented, not only read when we gather, but the Gospel lived. The Father said then for Peter, James, and John, He says for us today, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. My brothers and sisters, that voice of Christ may come to us sometimes thunderously in our acts of devotion, in our worship life together. That voice will sometimes come as a small, still voice in the moments of prayer when we are spurred on to be encouragement, to give, to pray, to fast. The thunderous voice or the small, still voice it doesn't make a difference. We are called, my brothers and sisters, to listen to him. Let us focus our attention on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us keep our ears, our hearts, our minds open to the voice of the Lord. In all that we are doing in this Lenten season, open to hear the voice of Christ. And let us listen to him. And in listening, unite ourselves to him. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.